Hey everybody, this is Tiffany Malott. Welcome to the Malott's.com weekly webcast. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys as promised about long distance building. Now long distance building is something very near and dear to my heart because I was a long distance recruit. 15 years ago when I was introduced to this incredible profession of multi-level marketing, I was actually introduced by someone who lived states away from me. Um, I was living in Memphis, Tennessee, um, as the story goes, and I met a gentleman out of town. I was actually in Atlanta. We were both there. That's where I met him. He sent me information to Memphis because he lived in Maryland. Now, I decided to get started, and he had never even been to Tennessee before, so he didn't know anyone there, uh, and he tried to plug me into some things that were happening in the area, but they were really kind of like a fail. So, um, so I was there by myself, and because I saw what wasn't happening in my market, I really was ready to quit. I really was ready to just get my money back. This isn't going to work for me. Uh, what's happening for you in your area is not happening. Is not going to happen here. And the first thing he taught me was, if it's not there, you put it there. Um, and so thus began my journey uh, in relationship marketing. Uh, the second thing that he did that I want to encourage each and every one of you who have long distance agents um, is he got me to a big event. He got me to the international convention. And when I went to that convention, my, my sights expanded. My vision got really, really huge. And I understood what could happen. And it didn't matter who wasn't there. It didn't matter who wasn't doing it right. None of that mattered to me. It was what I saw and what I saw other people do. And I knew in my heart I could do the exact same thing. Um, so I went home with this sparkle in my eye, literally, as people said, and, uh, and I just got busy. Um, so, so I actually uh, was by myself in a market, and all I had, the only support, truthfully, that I had was my sponsor in Maryland. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is long-distance recruiting, uh, how to do it, why to do it, uh, and, and give you some tips on how to do it right. Now, I must share with you that I'm a very atypical networker. Some of the stuff you're going to hear from me, you aren't going to hear from other network marketers. Some of them uh, may be in secret, some may be out of secret. I'm going to share with you what I've done for 15 years and what I did in the past four years. Uh, this is the way I have built. This is the way I've taught others to build. Um, and, and it has served us pretty well. Okay, so let's first of all talk about... about um, the importance of long distance building. Why do you want people long distance in your business? And just to keep me on track, I've written down some notes. Uh, the first is, you know, you want your money in different time zones, right? I mean, don't you want to go to bed on the East Coast and still have money make, being make, uh, making money while you sleep on on uh, on the West Coast? Uh, so you definitely want money in different time zones. But this is really important. It sounds really great, you know, money in different time zones. I want money, you know, being made for me in Australia while I'm asleep in the United States. Uh, but I can also tell you it's really important when it comes time for, um, hate to say it like this, but disaster, catastrophe, weather, natural occurrences, uh, because I have seen a lot of people whose entire organization is on the East Coast. I mean, they're, or, or, or the Midwest. And then a snowstorm hits, a blizzard hits, and their entire business is shut down. And I, unfortunately, over these past 15 years, have literally seen people, um, their business just completely was done for like a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, because their whole market was under snow. I mean, it was just completely wiped out. They didn't have any business going on outside of that market. So when that market got hit in a bad way, when the weather was inclement, when something crazy happened, I mean, that person's business stopped. And when that person's business stopped, their money stopped. So the first thing you really want with a long distance business is you want you want you want um, markets, you want an organization that's not affected by every little thing that happens in one market because you have other markets on your business is more solid and secure. Uh, the second thing about long distance recruits is, and having long distance agents, is that they're more independent. You know, they think on their own. They act because they have to. Uh, they they do not have you there to hold their hand, so they grow up a little faster, if you will. 
Um, they make the mistakes. And you really, in my opinion, know a, a long distance agent's commitment level when they are doing things by themselves. It's not the same as you being able to meet someone for coffee all the time or drive to their house and wake them up and make them do a wild party or plug into a, a webcast or a conference call. I mean, it really is a chance for a person to decide how badly do they want it. And even if they're not doing it great, you can see uh, the commitment level of, a, of an agent long distance. And you can also uh, see them learning a lot faster. Their mistakes, they don't make over and over again. Uh, they, are, they may hit their head up against that wall, but they won't do it again. And they're very quick to learn from their lessons and teach those lessons very quickly to their team after they've after they've learned from them um so your agents are more independent more autonomous and i believe they develop into leaders faster because they have to be the leader um the third reason is leverage uh it allows you to have some some freedom in your business it allows you to to be able to uh to travel uh which you could do but it allows you to be in a situation where you know if you've checked out or you're sick or you got to take care of a family member or whatever the case may be you know that you've got people in other states in other countries that aren't affected by what you're doing per se you know if you're checked out for a while because you're sick um or you've lost a loved one i've been through this twice unfortunately in the past two years um it you know my business didn't stop in fact my business got stronger um because there were people who were independent in other markets and they didn't have to be they didn't have to be affected by my energy changing my energy being down they didn't have to be affected by me not showing up because i just couldn't do it right then um or not picking up the phone they were because they had built their own because they were long distance and we had taught them how to build their business in spite of us and not because of us um the next thing is time freedom you know in the beginning building long distance you're going to invest some time and i'm going to talk about that but really with long distance building you really get some time freedom um because you can't be there all the time because you can't drive and do every wild party you can't you can't meet them every every day to make sure that they're building their business or doing their activity you just can't do it and you can't talk to them 24 hours a day so when there is production that happens it's off of you um and that's really what you want in the long run to get that long long term that uh you know drinking out of a coconut on the beach type money that my husband talks about it's from building long distance so you get a lot more time freedom from building long distance um and then uh and so basically those are some tips those are some reasons why you want to build long distance so let's talk about why people with all the benefits of building long distance let's talk about why people don't build long distance like what is the problem what is the problem why don't more people build long distance um so here's some myths uh that i would like to debunk or bust i'm gonna be the myth buster today on long distance recruiting of why people won't build long distance uh one of them is that my my agent won't have support they won't have support there so they won't be able to build that is a serious myth because you will support them your upline will help you support them and support doesn't mean holding their hand support doesn't mean giving them a hug every other day support doesn't mean meeting them with coffee and rubbing their back when their best friend decided not to sign up with a professional set i mean that's not support Support is constant communication, is, is inspiration, is motivation, it's answering questions, it's information. Um, that's what support is. So support needs to be redefined. And I'll talk about support because when I got started in Memphis 15 years ago, I had amazing support from my sponsor because I talked to him on a regular basis. And I will go into that when I talk about how to sponsor um, uh, long distance people. But I will say that support does not mean uh, just because they're far away from you, you can't support them. In fact, I believe you can support a long distance person better if you do what I do, um, because you will give them what they need and not give them too much because you don't have anything else to do because you now are coddling them and babying them instead of developing them into a leader. That's just my opinion. All right, second myth, all right? Um, well, they're not gonna have success in the business because there are no events in the area. So I can't build there, there are no events in the area. Well. Newsflash, okay? Four years ago, there were no events anywhere 
<laughs> in secret. And if those of us who got started four years ago, three and a half years ago had said, oh, I can't start this company because my people aren't going to be successful because there are no events in the area. Well, there wouldn't be a secret. Uh, so that's the problem that people have is they think that events make you successful. If you are using an event to make you successful, that event has become a crutch for you and not a tool. Um, and so events don't make you successful. Events help you expose more people, um, help you reach more people, give you a place to plug your team into, bring people together and get regular frequent training um, and exposure, if you will. Um, but a, a, an event does not make you successful. So that is a serious myth that people won't be successful if they don't have an event in the area. Um, and so I just want you guys to understand because obviously that's not the case because we have agents who are doing extremely well in markets with no event. We have agents who did so well and built such a great team, they started an event. So please don't think because someone gets started in, an, in a market that there's no event, that they won't have success um, because events don't make you successful. Agents make the events successful, okay? All right, so let's, uh, didn't I have some more myths I needed to think about here? Okay, well, those are, oh, I did. Um, well, here's another one that I know. Another one that I know is that their uh, presentation, uh, their presentations won't be any good because I'm not there to do them. Um, so I've seen a lot of people who are like, you know what? Their presentations are gonna be horrible. No one's gonna be there to do uh, no one's going to be there to do their presentation. Uh, someone's not plugged in, obviously, because I'm doing webcast and they're calling me. So we need to promote this better. Thank you, guys. Um, so anyway, uh, so, that you know, they, their presentations won't be any good. No one's there to do it for them. Well, let me let me just debunk that myth uh, because uh, their presentations will be good because you can train them before they have the wild party and teach them how to do a good presentation. Yes, it's going to take some time and some effort, but you can help them present as well as you do. Um, and then also because of technology today, you can be there available with the, in the presentation or in part of the presentation to help them as well. So that is another myth that people are slowing their businesses down because they do not have a presentation there or someone's not there to do the presentation. And that is just not, not true. They feel like, well, it's not going to be good because I'm not there to do it. Um, I've heard some people say, well, you know what? The right time for me to build in that area is when I travel there. So I had someone say, oh, yeah, I have a friend in this market or this state, and I'm going to be going there on vacation in about five months, and that's when I'm going to show them secret. Now, sitting here on this webcast, that sounds hilarious to us. We're like, oh, pshaw. We would never do that. But that's what a lot of us are doing. A lot of us are waiting to expose people when we get there because we think that we have to be there. It can't be done without us. There's no event in the market. And someone has got to be there personally to show these people secret. And that is, that is a huge mistake. First of all, you don't know who else is exposing these people. So, you know, just because they're on your list doesn't mean that they're on, they're not on someone else's list. So while you're waiting five, six months for the family reunion to go and show everybody's secret, um, somebody else has got them on their list and they're not waiting. And someone else is exposing them, maybe to secret, but I will tell you something that's happening all too often is that we're waiting to share secret and there are other people who are sharing other companies with them. You know, inferior companies, inferior products, people who don't have the heart and don't have the community, who don't have the leadership, the comp plan, the timing, the everything that we do. And because we're sitting around waiting um, to get there and show it to them, these people are just pounding the people that we know, the people whose names are on our list. They're pounding them and, we're, and they're getting scooped up by somebody else. And, and you know, I can, I can just tell you that is a mistake. 
And I am so glad that 15 years ago, someone said it doesn't matter where she lives. Um, she needs to know about this opportunity. She needs to know about this profession. She needs to at least be able to decide for herself if she wants to work, if she wants to make it happen in a market by herself. Because if they had taken that opportunity away from me, if they had just prejudged me and the situation that I wouldn't be able to do it, so or they'd have to wait until someone else was there, or they'd have to wait until they got there, you know, I, I don't know where I'd be today. Um, so just remember that we're in business of exposing and helping people understand and learn about secret, okay? Uh, and so it doesn't matter how you learn about it. When you're ready, you're ready. So let's make sure we don't make these mistakes anymore. So let's talk about how to do this better. Now, long distance is important because I've learned uh, from some of the best mentors in the world that your business should be outside of your backyard. 80% of your business should be outside of your backyard in uh, two years, all right? And when a lot of us look at our business, it's actually 80% is in our backyard after five years. Um, everybody on our team, most of all the activity, all the production is right there in our backyard, right where we can see them every week. We can bring them to our house. We can do the dinners. We can do this and that. Um, and that's who we build with. And we duplicate that. So everyone on our team builds out, built in that market as well which makes a market look really, really great. But if a market can grow, if you could get one market growing in one area, you could do it over and over and over again if you duplicate yourself and follow the right system. So now let's talk about, um, all right, so we've gone over those. So we talked about why it's good and why people aren't doing it. So I told you guys that I'm a very, very different from a lot of other networkers. So I'm gonna share with you uh, how to, how to prospect, how to build long distance, what you should do, um, what you should not do, in my opinion, and I'm gonna give you proof, okay? And then we'll answer some questions, okay? So for me, I will just share with you that uh, I believe in, in long distance recruiting, and I believe that you should be prospecting people right now long distance as we speak. Um, I believe that everyone one should have uh, a list of local people in play and a list of long distance people in play. And let's talk about what to do. All right. So first of all, you have a long distance prospect. And what is long distance? Anyone that is a minimum of 100 miles or more away from you. That is considered long distance. You can't just run into them at the store. Uh, it takes some effort to get to see them. Um, and and it's, it's not easy drive or even a flight for them to plug into you. So that is long distance. So if you have someone, the first thing, first person on your list, or you have a person on your list that you want to expose this long distance, you should do the text training that my husband is doing. It's the exact same thing. Um, you should send them the video, watch this four minute video. Everything is the same. And see the beauty of technology today is that you can really expose someone using these incredible tools. I mean, our devices are in our hands. I mean, think about all of the videos. People, I'm amazed when I watch how many videos people watch all day long from cats to babies to kids freaking out about shots to inspirational stories of people singing and 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 and, and crime and all this kind of stuff they watch video after another after another after another after another after another after another and the message gets across every single time and do you think that the person who produced the video or even sent the video lived 10 minutes away from them no in fact some of these videos people are watching started a world away literally countries away on the other side of the world but the message got to them and that is the beauty of technology and the reason why you use these videos instead of yourself is because the video will always be on we won't um, and it duplicates it doesn't just work so we've got to use this texting video send the four minute video and guess what it will get to california it will get to maine it will oh my goodness this video will even get to canada and mexico and korea and japan the videos actually get everywhere. And this is really, I know I'm being facetious, but I'll tell you, this is really big because 15 years ago, oh my gosh, I don't even want to talk about how old I am as far as building network marketing. 15 years ago, there was no texting, there were no video, people video. If I sent someone a video, I had to send them tape that was literally this big, okay, like this big. 
I had to pay like eight dollars for then like another five dollars to put it in the mail and hope that they watch it that they put it in their vcr and watch the video so i could pick up the phone and call them now we just text the video and we could be having a conversation in seconds so this is really huge guys don't underestimate the power of this and because of technology you could be texting people all over the place don't worry about where they are worry about where they are and what, this is what I mean by that. Instead of worrying about geography um, and logistics, let's worry about the geography of their heart. Like, where are they in their lives? Are they fed up? Are they just sick and tired of being sick and tired? Did, did Was the last straw today? Was the today the last straw where they can't have another day off and they're going to miss another field trip? Was that, what was was this final bill, this, this bill that they still can't, are they still Sick of these letters piling up? Are they tired of turning off their collectors? Are they tired of dying? they know they owe the money, but they can't pay them back? Let's focus on where they are instead of where they are. And let's send it to them and figure the rest out. Okay. So you need to do the text training. Now, for some of you, um uh husband on the four-minute video, I you know, I also benefited from Eric Worry's training on just texting people and ask them asking them for coffee. So let's just have coffee. And so a lot of times you can't you can't have coffee long distance or can you? So the funny thing is when he sent that, when he gave us that challenge, Eric Worry did at the breakthrough training in Vegas that I did earlier this year, he said, send a text message, 25 text messages out saying, let's have coffee. Well, I know so many people long distance. Um, I just said, you know what? I would love for us to get together for coffee. And I know we can't, but we should still do it anyway. Why don't we meet on FaceTime? Why don't we meet on Skype? And I had three friends that said, let's set a time to meet on Skype and I'll have my coffee in my hand. And two of them, we actually did that. One of them, we ended up having to talk on the phone. So you can text them a video, text them, let's have coffee, meet up on the device and have a conversation. All you want is to get the ball rolling, okay? Um, so the first thing with long distance people you're trying to prospect is send them a video, get them, um, Let's have coffee with them, however it works out, okay? All right, and then the next thing is you're going to talk to them. You're gonna to talk to them uh, and they're gonna be interested. You're gonna send them more videos. They're gonna be interested. They're gonna want more videos. They're gonna be interested. And then you should definitely use some third party. Um, maybe they have questions. It's time to do third party. Maybe they're ready for products, okay? Maybe they're ready for products. That's okay, because we've got those too. Um, I'm a firm believer of a sample regimen. Let me do a quick training here. The sample regimen was designed not to just give people samples. It was designed to do what we couldn't do locally with a long distance prospect. So if I have a long distance prospect in Rhode Island right now, and she's, I, I said, let's, 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 let's talk. We haven't talked in a long time. And then, um, and I sent her a four minute video or I send her a four minute video and she's interested and she's open and she wants more information. And I send her more videos and she goes, okay, I got to try these products. And then I'm like, okay, I want you to try these products. I don't try to find an agent to send her the products. I don't try to find a, a, a kiosk for her to go to. Guess what? Now we can send her a sample regimen. So I tell her it's on the way. I get her skin type and I send it out. Okay. Sample regimens are going out faster now. That's really great. But I tell her to expect the sample regimen. Now, some people stop there. They send the sample regimen and boom, they're done. All right. Hope you use it. Call me. I hope you like it. That sort of thing. But see, I want the sample regimen to work for me the same way my wild party set would work for me. Um, if she was in town, I would actually meet with her and do a five and five, or I would meet with her and I would actually do a one-on-one -on -one and take her through the regimen, take her through the information real quick. She'd see it, boom, and I'd help her make a decision, whatever's best for her. Well, that's what the sample regimen does. The sample regimen sent her in the mail allows me to meet her like on a hangout meet her on Skype, meet her on FaceTime, and the same amount of time that I would spend in her living room or in my kitchen would be the same amount of time that we just spend like this. And I say, hi, you got your sample regimen? She holds it up. I told her in advance, don't open it because I wanna take you with, I wanna take you through it. If I was there personally, this is what I would do, but this will have to work right now. And so 
I actually, there's cleansing milk, there's toner, um, there's peeling gel. There's just about everything I would do one-on-one. -on -one, I could do it like that and I can just flip and or use my five and five and take her through uh, through a presentation. And now half her face looks amazing. She's loving it. I'm loving it. And guess what? Just like we're talking now, it's time to make a decision. Um, and so that's what the sample regimen is for. So I suggest everyone start sending out sample regimens. In fact, I challenge you to send a sample regimen every week for once a week for the next 90 days. Send one out every week for the next 90 days. And don't just, oh, I'm gonna send it to that person and just or send, or, you know, send it to them. What I suggest is that you do the, do the system, Tell them they're going to get some free samples and I'd love to meet you on Skype or FaceTime um, or even over the phone if they're that old school to walk you through it. OK, um, and so everyone should be doing that once a week. That should become your weekly method of operation. One sample regimen a week. So let's talk about the cost of that. That's five or six bucks. That's twenty dollars. Now, you know, if those people were in town, you sit down with them and you walk away with a bundle. So it's definitely going to pay off. The time is going to be minuscule because you don't even have to travel. You're just going to travel to your phone or to your desktop or to your iPad. And you're going to just sit there for 20, 25 minutes, take them through the whole thing. And that five bucks is going to be the best investment because if nothing else, you got someone who believes in secret and is now a walking billboard for you. But because we know our products are awesome and our products do the work for us, we have an unfair advantage with secret products because of that these products are actually going to make that person even long distance say i gotta get me some secret and then you could just sign them up for a customer and agent and boom the process starts okay um i suggest you do use um um i, I do suggest that you do uh actually uh do it with them and and not do this so i, I just got a question i'm going to answer that in just a second so let's talk about uh, what happens, okay? So a person sends a video. They said, I did. I text the video. They loved it. I talked to them on the phone. They want more information. I send them more videos, but they want the product. So this is the message that everyone, and I know a lot of people are getting it because I get it all the time. Inbox or text message or someone's calling me and they're like, do we have anyone in Anchorage, Alaska? Do we have anyone in... Montpelier, Pelier, Vermont. Do we have anyone in uh, Okeechobee, Florida? I mean, I'm like, okay. And then they're like, because I've got a person there who needs to be taken through the regimen. And, and I know they don't mean any harm because it's our fault. That's why I'm doing this right now. But they don't understand that you don't have to look for someone in Okeechobee or Anchorage or Montpelier. You have a system that our company has invested time and money and expertise so you can keep your business in your own hand. So let me ask you guys a question. Um, have you ever heard of Foghorn Leghorn? Okay, so I love this story. So I'm dating myself. Foghorn Leghorn was one of the Looney Tunes characters. And it was a cartoon. Foghorn Leghorn was this huge rooster. He was a big white rooster with these big red plumes. And he talked so funny. I'm going to do my impersonation. He'd be like, I boy, I boy, I boy. So he was really hilarious. So this is going somewhere. So everyone stay with me. So Foghorn Leghorn, um, there's an episode where Foghorn Leghorn was like, standing next to a hen's nest or something like that and or, or an egg rolled out of the nest but anyway foghorn leghorn is next to this little egg the hen is gone she's lost the egg it's somewhere and then the egg hatches right next to foghorn leghorn and out comes this bright yellow adorable little chick and the first person that the chick sees is foghorn leghorn and so when the chick looks at foghorn leghorn the chick says Mama. And for the entire episode, this chick is running around loving and following and saying mama to Foghorn Leghorn, who's a rooster, by the way, who couldn't even have, who couldn't even lay eggs. So the whole point of it is Foghorn Leghorn is trying to get this chick to understand I'm not your mother. And he goes, boy, boy I'm not your mama, boy, I'm not your mama, boy. It's hilarious. Um, but anyway, and he just goes on and on and then just kind of just funny little conflict that's hilarious in the cartoon but i realize that's what a lot of our agents are doing now that that is a biological uh physiological uh happening that is called imprinting and imprinting is when something is first born an animal a person is first born they connect with the first person they see 
And so that's called imprinting. So no matter what, who the mother is, if it's a monkey, he sees a, a, a human or a chick that sees a rooster, they believe the first thing they see, that's the first thing they love and they believe that's mama. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you all and my impersonations and all is because that's what many of you are doing. You are getting these little chicks and these prospects and these, and even some agents, and you are racking your brains and calling your upline and doing everything you can to find someone in that market to raise your baby. And so you will actually move heaven and earth to find someone to do the first wild party or to find someone to put mud on them instead of sending a sample regimen. And you will actually take this new agent or this prospect, put them with someone there, an agent who's there because we're community, we all help and they don't, and they want to help. But then this chick is like, this new agent or this prospect is like, mama. And that is who they believe is their support all the time. And you can't fault these agents or new or prospects for thinking, well, why can't this person be my upline? After they figure things out a little bit, well, you're the one who supported me the most. And you can't fault a lot of them because what we do is we actually give our babies away. We text, we do everything we can to find someone to do that first, do that, um, that initial appointment, to do their blueprint, to do their first wow party, to talk to them about getting to the convention. And all of a sudden, we have actually taken this baby in his hands instead of using technology, using the phone, and using ourselves to do the same thing we're doing with local agents. And so I go through that, all of that, to help you guys understand you have the tools, you have the technology, you have the ability to teach long distance. It's just going to take some time. So now that I've gone through all of that, just want to get in your head a little bit. Um, stop giving your babies away. All right. So someone just asked me, at what level can I start building long distance? You need to start building long distance as soon as you are an agent with a package. And I'm going to go through how to do that because anybody could send a sample regimen. Anybody could get someone on Skype. Anyone could say, hey, I'm new, but I'm working with some amazing people and do a three-way call, which I'm going to be training on that next week, um, and do a three-way call and connect with your, with your expert so you don't have to know everything. So long distance building is not a level thing. Long distance building is an agent thing. Anytime you can share secret with someone, put products on them. And remember, now you can do it with sample regimen and technology because I could be doing I could be doing this right now. Everybody here could have a sample regimen and I could be doing my flip book right now and telling you guys now, take your cleansing milk, open it, put it on your cotton pad. Now take one half of your face and go like this. What are y'all going to do? Y'all going to go like this. And let me tell you how I know this. This is not theory. This is how we did it before the sample regimen. Um, we actually put together our own little regiments and sent it to people. And this is how we got long distance agents when we realized everybody can't be flying and driving everywhere. It doesn't duplicate. So at any level, you can start. All right. At, at any level, you can start um, building. And the reason why is you don't have to know everything. You don't have to know everything because you actually have a team. All right. You have upline support. You have people who have your back. And guess what? They don't need to be in the same market as that person. So let's talk about now you have a new agent. That new person that you did the sample regimen with, they actually have gotten started. They're pumped. And I'm going through this right now as we speak. My husband and I have a new agent in Illinois named Colleen Shield. Hi, Colleen. Hope you're on. Uh, Colleen just got started, uh, got, uh, got tons of products keeps ordering stuff every day. She orders something new. So Colleen is good to go, but she is in Illinois in the middle at, by uh, university of Illinois. So there's no going on there. And instead of sending, trying to scour the earth, looking for someone, I personally feel like the best people to get her started is me and my husband. Um, so this is what, um, what I do when I get a new agent started. And I will probably be using Colleen a lot as an example. Okay, so I, the person's a new agent, they must have a package. 
You have to have posture on getting people packages. And you especially have to do it with long distance people. If you're not confident and you don't have um, and you don't have the confidence and the posture, that's what third party is for. Get someone on the line in your upline support who can be with confidence and posture say, you need this package. And here's why it's so important with a new agent, uh, a long distance agent, is because what are they gonna use when they're by themselves? What, what are they going to do? And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I was in Memphis and uh, this was like literally about four years ago. And uh, and we didn't have anything. We didn't even have a flip book. So this is how bad it was. But I had gone to Memphis with nothing but my products. And I had showed it to some people that I knew uh, knew there. And one of them was my godmother. She's like my adopted godmother. She's awesome. And, um, and so she loved everything. And when I showed her the packages, she was like, oh, baby, it's been hard in Memphis. It has been hard in Memphis. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'll get some products, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I was heading to another party across town. Now, while I was packing my stuff up, I heard her on the phone saying, oh, girl, you should have gotten over here. These products, you're not going to believe she had this magnet, girl. I can't even explain it. You need to see it for yourself because she's really great at promoting and getting people excited about seeing something. So then she gets, uh, she goes, yeah, come on over. I'll show it to you. So then she gets off the phone and then I said, oh, who's coming over? And she says the name. And then I said, well, how are you going to show it to her? Because I'm leaving. I got to take my products and go to the other wild party. I said, Miss Selma, you're gonna have to get you some products because not only am I going across town, I'm going home tomorrow. And when I came back from the other wild party, she has signed up for the biggest package and she has been able to sell products like $1,000 in one day retailing products just because she's equipped. Now, the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because a lot of times we won't equip our agents. Remember, sales, okay. I'm supposed to ask you, you can start sending your questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can start sending your questions. I'm going to wrap up this part and then we will do answer questions. Okay. So, um, so basically you need to make sure they have packages. You need to make sure they have products because they're going to be by themselves. And there's nothing worse than an agent trying to do secret anywhere, but especially long distance with no one to borrow from or no one to support them without products. Okay. Number two, uh, your phone is going to be your best friend. And what I suggest is you communicate with your new agent, long distance, especially every single day. You should do this with all agents, but especially long distance agents. You should communicate with them every single day. For instance, Colleen and I, um, we communicate every day. Uh, Colleen works third shift like I used to. I understand her schedule. We have a time every day that we talk. And every day I give Colleen an assignment. The first assignment was we did a memory jogger. She added more to her list and uh, and then she watched some, some videos and then we got back on. We did uh, we did the blueprint. I gave her another assignment. She said a little while. Uh, and every day it's not like three hours. It's not even this long. Some days it's it's 20 minutes. Some days it's it's a little longer. Some days it's a little shorter. But every day I give her a little bit more and a little bit more in the form of an assignment. So every day she knows what to do. Now, why do I have to talk to them every day? Because every day you need to make them a little bit more bulletproof. We slack on the local people because we know we're going to see them at Secret Academy or we know that they're going to be at Shabbat or we know I work with them. So you could put your hands on them. But with a long distance person, that doesn't that's not the case. So if you go days without talking to an agent and every day someone disappointed them, someone laughed at them, someone criticized them. You, you can't get them back. Your text messages, phone calls, emails, and inboxes will go silent. And so you need to communicate with them every day so you're in their head and other people are not, and you're getting them more and more bulletproof every day. And long distance agents have to have that armor because it's just them. It's just them. All right, so every day you need to communicate with them. Number three, your secret back office. That's going to be your best friend. That is going to be you and your long distance agent's best friend. You do not have to train them on everything. Do you know for, uh, I would say three years ago, well, when we started doing uh, wild parties, when we first got started, literally I would be sitting on the phone, holding the phone, training people on wild parties for like an hour, two hours, because there was no tool for them to watch. Uh, I will never forget. I think, I mean, Derek Gilson, I must've kept him on the phone for like three hours uh, just to teach him how to do everything because there was no tool. Now we have the tool. So yesterday, uh, Colleen's assignment today, 
was to have all the wild party videos watched, demonstrating the products, going through all this. Now, the videos don't do everything for us. They do about 80 percent. You know, but there's some 1% things, some little nuances that you've learned that I've learned that we need to go over. It keeps me from having to explain everything and can just get to the things that she needs, the, the, the other things that's not in the video that she needs to know. So this is super, super crucial is that you send them to the video to get the information and then you answer their questions or fill in the blanks um, and then, you know, take them through it. Like, so tomorrow her assignment is to familiarize herself with the flip book. And then I'm going to go through a wild party with her where she goes through each page and I'm going to tell her this is what you're going to do. Now, some people are saying, oh, that takes too much time. Oh, it will. But wait till you know Colleen's name. Wait till I post her up as a new superstar and executive because this is time well spent. I am not spending time. I am an investing time. So an hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day to teach a long distance person, have success, get them more bulletproof and have their confidence level up. And then what I do with them is what they do with their agents, long distance and local to where she can do this thing on her own. So while I'm in Israel, she's not freaking out because she didn't have no support. Because when I travel to different places and she can't pick up the phone, she's lost. No, she's plugged into the system. She's already spoken to people on HQ. She knows where everything is on the back office because we've gone through it and she's learning something new every day. All right. Um, and then commitment. You got to be committed to these people. All right. So here's the thing. They got to have products. You got to communicate every day. You got to use the back office. They must be on S4S. All right. All right. And S4S and Skype, and then you've got to help them with their wild parties, whether it's just closing it out or walking them through it, train them on how to do it themselves and be there to be their third party expert or get someone who does. And then lastly, and I know the question is coming, when do you go travel to that market? All right, so I'm going to give you, I have built long distance in three phases. Phase one is um, the people in that market, all they do is wild parties wild parties, 30, 60, 90 days, six months. I don't care. They just need to do wild parties because they need to get great at what they have to do seven days a week at our number one money-making activity. They have to get really good at that first before they do anything else. Phase two, once they've hit like silver uh, and in phase one, they can start their boot camps now that we have little home meetings when they get a small team. But the key is phase two is setting up a weekly event, a secret academy. You have to be a platinum to do that anyway. So if they're brand new, they're going to need to be a platinum to have a secret academy. So someone may say, well, that may take a year. Yes, it may. It doesn't mean that that market won't produce. It doesn't mean that leaders aren't going to come out of it. It just means that they need to do it when they're ready. So why do I make them wait? I make them wait because you need a core group of people to really be able to put on a great event. The reason why events are good is because there are stories in the room. Because there's a bunch of people who can get up and say, I just got my executive watch. Um, because there's some people, there are a lot of people who can get up and say, I paid my car note last week with this. Or, you know, I just got $200 today with daily pay. That is, you need stories. And when people start events too soon and there's one story or two stories or two and a half stories because someone's not sure if they still want to do it or not, that's a weak event. That's a weak event. And there's a lot of people who have the philosophy of build it and they will come. Well, I say build it and then the event will grow. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with just having a strong core group of people going from house to house to house, kitchen and kitchen to living room. And here's why I believe that. Because 15 years ago when I got started in Memphis, that's all I did for the first six months. And I hit the top of the company my first month. I made $1,000, no event, nothing to plug into. Second month, 1500 My fifth month, I reached the top of the company. My fifth month, I made over $4,000 that month. My sixth month, I made over $6,000, six or $7,000 that, that month. And I had no event, no event. We started getting together in living rooms to, to in my living room to answer questions for people who were coming on board. We always plugged into the weekly conference call. We didn't have webinars back then, but that was our that was our lifeline to everything else. We heard the testimonials, we heard the training, we heard our leadership. We stayed inspired, and that made us more bulletproof for the coming week. Um, and we made money. I produced uh, two more executives without an event, without a weekly event. Um, and then when we did have a weekly event, and people started bringing guests. We had stories, we had posture, we had confidence, we had experience. 
And that's why I say phase two is definitely wait. Uh, it could be, it could take as long as it needs to, but it's definitely a minimum of like 90 days. And you need a platinum to do a secret academy. And then phase three is at least 90 more days. And that's when you do a regional. Now I know some people have flip flopped it. They will actually go into a new market. As soon as a person gets a, uh, uh, get started. Maybe they go executive and then they do a regional and then these people just exhaust everything and fill the room And then the regional is supposed to produce enough money to pay for a weekly event um, the only challenge with that is that The way you're supposed to do regionals is you're supposed to pay for everything <laughs> Like when you when someone flies into your market, you're supposed to pay for their flight their food their hotel because they are doing you a service and if you pay for it, you'll get people outside of your upline support as well. Um, and so that's just how I've learned to do it. And if you do a weekly event that's growing, you can build up a nice little stash to be able to host guests properly. Okay, so that's phase one, phase two, and phase three. And here's my philosophy. Someone's going to ask me, when do I fly in? When do I support them? When do I go to their market? I say you don't do it at least until they're bronze. And here's why. You want to go into a market. You don't want to build the fire. You want to pour gas on the fire. And a mistake a lot of agents are making is that they are going in to build the fire. Oh, she got a special agent package. And they book a flight. They only made $150 off the, off the enrollment bonus. But they book a flight, go into debt, in the person's house, and, and then they go and then they build. And then a lot of them are staying forever. They stay for weeks. They stay for days and days. And what is happening is they do make something happen. They do get agents, they do get uh, customers and they built some momentum. But what happens is this, they, there was nothing. Person got the package and the agent goes into town. And then whoop, here it goes, it goes up and we've got something going. The agent leaves town and what happens? It's not, it's not going good. And then those agents are like, we need you to come back. So that agent flies back in and what happens? Up goes up that agent has to go home they have a family they have other team and then the production goes down here's why i say this what they did they built the fire and usually we don't equip the agents there to maintain and keep the fire going because they feel like subconsciously they feel the only reason we had success was because you flew in here anyway so i what i do is the opposite i don't go, <laughs> I don't go. and then if they say what do i need to do i tell them you need to get be a bronze. You need to break some execs, whatever goal you want to give them. But I tell them you got to do something. And it's always more than superstar because I want to go into a market and work with everybody in that market. I do. And I want to get to know more than one person. I don't want to just know that one guy. And I definitely don't want to drive hours or fly across town, uh, fly across the country for someone who's not sure they want to do it. And they only invite three people. And I am in a room with one and a half people for a wild party and I just left my family and booked a flight. Okay. And I know this is happening because people are calling me and I'm telling you, stay at home, talk to them every day, challenge them, stretch them little by little to do more by themselves, encourage them to do one person wild party, two people wild party, three people wild parties and be present through hangouts or Skype to help them open new business and help these people make a decision and get some sales. And here's what will happen. When you do it this way, yes, it takes more effort, but they become effortless for you later. Because what will happen is they're like, oh, I could do that. That's all you do. And the next thing you know, instead of them texting you for help, they're texting you that they got a customer. They're texting you for a welcome call because they just got an agent because you prove to them they can do it. And so the way I do it is when I go into town, there's already there's already agents waiting and they are eagerly anticipating my arrival because they've been doing it by themselves and they're like man we want to see what she does you know i feel like if i fix a couple of things in my wild party i can't wait to see you how you do it and so when i do wild parties they are taking notes like you wouldn't believe when i'm saying i'm going to do three wild parties for you in the only three maximum days that i'm going to be there then they're like inviting everybody there are tons of guests people are hanging outside in uh, hanging outside the house because they have packed it because they appreciate my time because they've been doing it themselves and then they take notes they watch my every move they ask great questions they are not apathetic and they are not absent and that's when i get a chance to take this little fire that they built on their own and that's where i get a chance to just throw gas on it and then they explode and I, that's all they need to take it to the next level and then they just keep growing from there because they know they can do it 
They just need a little tweaking. So um, when I go into a market, and this is uh, a template that many of you can use, I don't stay more than three days. I always do a family dinner first so I can get to know the agents in the market. I don't only want to know one person because if that person checks out, I want to have relationships with everybody else. So I always do a family dinner, no talking business, just the way the Ben Shabbat family does it. Shoes off. I always have a glass of wine because I'm more fun when I have my glass of wine. And I just talk to my agents and I get to know them. Day two is wild parties. I do at least two. I like to do three. And I like to do it not in one person's house, but multiple locations um, in different parts of town so they can see what I do and what they need to do. And then the last thing I do before I leave is a team training. None of this is allowed to happen in a hotel, an office place. They don't rent anything. I'm in people's houses. And I want people with their shoes off. I want people sitting there. And I get, I'll buy my own whiteboard if they don't have one. I'll, I'll invest 60, 70 bucks to make sure they know what they need to, uh, to, to succeed when I leave. And then I answer all their questions. I go over basics. I map out what their activity has to look at. We do some goal setting. I give homework assignments. And then I tell them I believe in you and I'm excited about what's about to happen. And then in those two or three days, they get everything from me. And they, they work after I leave because they are so appreciative for my time. They can't believe I put all this, poured all this into them that they go make it happen because what do they want? They want to make me proud and they want me to come back. Um, and, and that usually happens opposite with a local agent. A local agent knows they're going to see you anyway. So they don't take it as seriously. Long distance agents do. And we get some great things. And I will say it is a numbers game. I have some local markets I don't want to talk about. Um, but in all of them, I did get some production. OK, uh, so there is my long distance training. And I broke it down because you can't learn everything uh, that someone who's been doing this for 15 years can learn in three to five minutes. Those videos are cute but you need to know the real deal. And I just gave it to you. So let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see. Um, first off, thank you for being real. You're welcome. And teaching duplicating good habits in our profession. And is this going to be put somewhere so it can be replayed and studied? And the answer is yes, we are putting these in our training vault. Uh, on the malots.com, this very website, and this replay will be put on our Facebook walls, John Malott, Tiffany Malott, and our business pages. Okay, so how do you transition from text messaging to calling them? I seem to stumble on what to text when I want to get them on the phone. So um, just say, well, why don't we talk? You know, it's not serious. Remember, one thing is we do not do scripts. We are regular people. So if you and I were texting back and forth, okay, if you and I were texting back and forth and you just realize I need to talk to her, what are you going to send me? Let's just get on the phone. I'm about to call you. Or you could say, when is a good time to talk? Because I think we're ready to talk now. And I would just love to share this with you. So you just say, let's talk. You've already got the balls rolling. You've already gotten it started. There's no stumbling. It is time now for us to talk. So just say, it's time to talk. Pick up the phone. Um, and, and I know that sounds like, oh, Tiffany, that's, but it really is that simple, guys. That's how I do it. That's how I keep it. Because if it's, if it's complicated, number one, everyone can't do it. And if everyone can't do it, it can't be duplicated. And if it can't be duplicated, we don't get paid. So it's that simple, sweetie. I hope that was good for you. Okay. Um, we did that. We did that. Is there any other forms of laws that we need to know about if we sign agent in other countries? This was awesome. Thank you. But um, here's the thing. Secret Direct, the network marketing side, which is what we do, is only in six countries. United States, you know what you need to do here. Canada, very clear what to do here. Mexico, Korea, Australia, and Japan. That's all you should be doing. That's all you should be doing. Anything else is not open, is not ready. And quite honestly, don't waste your time. And I'm, I, I appreciate you, Lourdes, for answering for asking that question. Because a lot of people, they want to build long distance. And then the first place they think, they don't think 100 miles away where their grandmama lives. They think 10,000 miles away in another country. And I think you should think big. We believe, think globally, but you got to build locally. You know how to have the biggest team long distance? It's have the, big, uh, the biggest team in another country, have the biggest team at home, in your local market, in other markets, in the United States. That's what we need to do. So you don't need to be trying to figure out and keep a 
an Excel spreadsheet on the different laws of the countries. That's what the company is doing for us. Our HQ is amazing internationally. They have made it easy for us to sign up people here at home, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Korea, and Japan is open and they are working that out as we speak. So, you know, why don't we just, um, you know, if you have someone outside of those six countries, just love them. Okay. Just love them and ask them if they know anybody in the other six countries. But right now, especially if you're new, let's just make a list of who you know at home and in the States. And let's, let's use this training and your other training to make sure you rank advanced. Um, another thing too, about building globally, people like to follow people globally. What I found in the past four years, people in other countries like to be on the teams of highly successful people. So a lot of people are stars and they want to interview who's going to blow it up for them in Japan. But quite honestly, and I know this for a fact, they want to follow someone who's proven to them already they know how to do it at home. And not wait uh, while we're thinking globally. All right. Oh, someone is so sweet. Let's read this one out loud. Worth every, I think I should put you in front of it. You are worth every penny of those multi-million secret pays you in commissions. How sweet you are, Brielle Madison. Whole team from DMV is on and will be better for this training. We thank you. You didn't have no question, but that's okay. We will take the compliment. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead and send them in. We have just a few more minutes. Um, and I am going to talk about, let me see if there's anything I missed on long distance training while well, I'll give you guys just a few more minutes to ask me a question. Uh, so basically with long distance, let's do a quick wrap up. Uh, long distance, how do you get long distance? You start with your warm market list. You don't go fly there and start walking around passing out cards, okay? You start with your long distance. Everybody is a window to a thousand people. I mean, you, okay, so what about you, this guys? I mean, it's so crazy. Um, I, my husband and I, had always dreamt of building and traveling to other countries, but we had never really been able to in our other company because they were only in the United States and a little in Canada. So when we got into secret, all we focused on was the United States, not because we were small minded. That's where we knew people. And then we focused on the United States and then it led people led us to people in Canada. And then, you know, our agents from the United States knew someone who knew someone in Canada. Next thing you know, we're building in Canada. Then all of a sudden they say, oh, we're opening Korea. Our agents in the United States led us to people in Korea. And then when Australia, uh, um, in Mexico, our agents who I don't know anyone in Mexico, but the people who sold me my beach house. Um, and when we went to um, Mexico, the agents that we personally introduced, introduced some people who personally introduced some people who led us to Mexico. And the exact same thing happened in Australia. And we hadn't even, I still haven't been to Korea yet. I don't want to jinx them. They, they just fine without me. And by the time I went to Australia, our Australian team had grown so much and I had never even been to Australia, but I had a team waiting for me. Why? Because I built at home and at home leads you abroad. So please remember that this is not for you to go and start thinking, oh, I got to send, I got to find someone in Japan. No, Japan is on your list at home. All right. So do a serious memory jogger, actually make a list. And I promise your next door neighbor is less than six degrees away from somebody who is in Japan or Australia or Korea or someplace else. But you've got to start digging through your list, mining your list to get the diamonds that will lead you elsewhere. All right. I think we got another question before we wrap up tonight. Oh, I'm just getting so many praise reports. Tiffany, thank you so much. Ditto on the real comment. Many times on other... Oh, okay. We're not going to put all that. All right. So uh, here we go. Is it okay to connect with old friends that are on my Facebook list in Japan and talk about secret and the opportunity right away? Or should I rebuild my relationship with them first? Thank you. You rock. Mm, thank you. And you rock with that question. That's a great question. So here's what I do suggest. Anytime you, you go back to your Facebook list with people on, on, um, in Japan or wherever, you're reconnecting anyway. And I do believe it's nice to ask, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? Uh, and what are you doing now? And guess what they're going to ask you? What are you doing now? So that's the way you reconnect. You don't have to spend 20 years. You don't have to spend two weeks asking about their kids and poking and liking their statuses. Just say, hey, oh my goodness, it's so great 
to reconnect with you. Uh, I see you're doing great. And um, so how are your kids or how are you doing? And they're going to say, I'm great. My kids are great. How are you doing? How are your kids? Awesome. So what are you doing now? The last time we talked, you were doing this. I'm doing this now. What are you doing? Okay. So that's basically how I would just reconnect, but just tell them, be honest with them. My husband says the best way to build, what does he say? He says, uh, the best system for building is just tell the truth and tell the truth is I wanted to reconnect with you. I've missed you. You're awesome. And our friendship has been great. Uh, but our company is opening up in Japan as we speak. And I thought of you and I don't know if it's for you or not. Okay. I don't know if it's for you or not, but I would, uh, I just want to tell you what's going on and maybe you could help connect with some people. Um, and that's all we're doing. All right. So someone said, you're awesome, Tiffany. Thank you. Uh, are they working on opening Dominican Republic? Dominican Republic was almost there and uh, they got crazy. You know, just don't operate the same way we do. They have a lot of rules and back channels, uh, quite honestly. And uh, they, I, they are working on it. But I will tell you, uh, go ahead and build what you can right now. Um, I'm telling you guys, if we weren't open in another country, let me just have this conversation with everybody. If we were not open in another country, the only country we were open in right now is the United States, we could still have multiple, many six-figuring earners and still have seven, seven-figuring earners. And I will say this, y'all don't get mad at me. But I will say this, I believe if we were only in the United States and Canada right now, that we would even have more six-figuring earners and seven-figuring earners because people wouldn't be so scatterbrained and distracted all around the world. Now, don't get me wrong. Our CEO is brilliant. He's got a master plan. And I'm just saying, we've got to discipline ourselves and stay on our course, even though the company's course is going around the globe. You may not be quite ready for that yet. Okay? So... I just want you to focus on what is open. Focus on your list. Focus on your list. You may say, well, I've got to listen to Dominican. Okay, so love on them and stay in touch with them. And you need to go executive and beyond and get to peak in Arizona so we can get you even further. Okay, so I'm over, but I do have one more question. Tiffany, thank you. And thanks everyone else for the great questions. I'll be in Korea this summer, so very good to know. Okay. And with that, they say there is no dumb question. And I think we've proven that. These were awesome questions. Thank you guys for, thank you for loving this community. Thank you for plugging into the malots.com. And it's just going to get better. This is going to be the worst webinar we ever have. So it just gets better from here. I am super excited about sharing with you guys and being my real, authentic, little crazy, atypical network marketing self. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. So make sure you share, promote, and help everybody with this information because I do believe what we just did will change a lot of lives. Have a great night.